Well, hello, it's good to be with you uh, again, and we're looking forward to a wonderful time today. Hope this can be an encouragement to you and to your family as we just have a little bit of fun celebrating who God is, opening the Word of God to memorize Scripture, and learning about this exciting story of Amy Carmichael, simply entitled, I Dare. So it's great to have everybody with us here today. We hope that you're having a great day. But now what we're going to do is we're going to have a word of prayer. So I need everybody to shoot your hands up, put them together, drop them in your lap, bow your head, and bow your heart. Father in heaven, thank you so much for being such a powerful, awesome God. And Lord, we thank you for this story. We thank you how, Lord, you love us. And we know that you love us by what you gave for us, and that is your Son, Christ. And Father, thank you that we understand. Thank you that you supply all of our needs. And Father, the Bible is very clear that you will take care of us. In the good times and in the difficult times, you are there. For you never leave nor forsake us. And Father, we thank you. We ask if there's anybody out there that does not know Jesus as their Savior, may today be the day of salvation for them. We love you. Please keep all of our families safe. Keep them protected. Keep them healthy. And Father, as we have an opportunity to spend time with one another, I pray you will bless that. And we'll focus on what is really important, and that's you. Father, we love you and we thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, hey, it's good to see you. Let's shake. No, we're not going to shake like that. We're going to shake like this. Oh, man, get all those wiggles out. You know what I mean? So go ahead. Let's shake it. No, we can't shake, but we can shake like this. And uh, it's so wonderful to be with you. We're going to sing a couple of songs here this morning. And uh, this has to be one of my favorite songs. You know, Psalm 23 talks about the relationship between the shepherd and the sheep. And i got to be honest with you, we do need a shepherd. And why? Because, you know, sheep are not the smartest. Sheep have a way of doing their own thing. But that's why the shepherd is there. The shepherd is there to lead and to guide them. And, you know, we need to develop a ear for the voice of the shepherd. And what he says goes. And we want to follow him. Follow him wherever he leads us. So let's sing this song. Are you ready? I just want to be a sheep, ba ba. I just want to be a sheep, ba ba. I pray, Lord, of my soul to keep. I just want to be a sheep, ba ba. I don't want to be a hypocrite. I don't want to be a hypocrite, cause they're not hip with it. I just want to be a sheep, ba yeah, ba. I just want to be a sheep, ba ba. I pray, Lord, of my soul to keep. I just want to be a sheep. Ba, ba, I don't want to be a Sadducee. <laughs> I don't want to be a Sadducee. Because they're so sad, you see. I just want to be a sheep. Yeah, ba, ba, I just want to be a sheep. Ba, ba, I pray the Lord of my soul to keep. I just want to be a sheep. Ba, ba, I don't want to be a Pharisee. I don't want to be a Pharisee. Because they're not there, you see. I just want to be a sheep. Ba, ba, I just want to be a sheep. Ba, ba, I pray the Lord of my soul to keep. I just want to be a sheep. Ba, ba, isn't it great that we can have a shepherd that we know will lead us in the right direction? And a great, a great um, chapter in the book of Psalms is Psalm 23. The Lord is my shepherd. But you know what it goes on and says? I shall not. Why? Because he's taking care of all my needs. He is a great shepherd. But you know what? We're going to sing another song, and this is a favorite of mine. I'm in right, out right, up right, down right, happy. Oh, but that's not what it says. It doesn't say happy. It says joyous all the time. Well, that's important to know. You know what? Happiness comes and goes, but the joy of the Lord is our strength. No, not no. Mm -hmm. Inside, inside strength. And so that's what we get our inside strength with is from the Lord. So yeah, happiness may come and go, but the joy of the Lord is always there. All right, you ready? Let me get those fingers out. 
I'm in right, out right, up right, down right, joyous all the time. I'm in right, out right, up right, down right, joyous all the time. Since Jesus Christ came in and cleansed my heart. <laughs> I'm in right, out right, up right, down right, joyous all the time. Oh, you'll have to forgive me if I say happy. But you know what? It's joyous all the time. So let's do it. Let's do it a little bit faster this time. And then we're going to do something really cool. Ready? Here we go. I'm in right, out right, up right, down right, joyous all the time. I'm in right, out right, up right, down right, joyous all the time. Since Jesus Christ came in and cleansed my heart. <laughs> I uh, in right, up right, up right, down right, doing this all the time. All right, good job. Now we're going to do it with our bodies. All right, it's going to be a little strange. That's all right because I'm strange. Strange for the Lord. Put your hands behind your back. All right, and we're going to do it with our bodies. Okay, make sure you have clearance around you. All right, no mom's precious things around you. Just you and your body and able to move. Okay. Here we go. I'm in right, out right, up right, down right, joyous all the time. I'm in right, out right, up right, down, joyous all the time. Since Jesus Christ came in and cleansed my heart from <laughs> I'm in right, out right, up right, down right, joyous all the time. Good job. All right, give yourself five claps for that. One, two, three, four, five. Go ahead and give yourself a high five. Yeah. Good job singing on that. You know what? I can tell I'm getting older because I'm breathing a little heavy after doing that song. Well, you know what? We are going to sing a couple of other songs, but uh, this is probably one of my favorites because obedience is the key as a Christian. And who do we obey? We obey God and we obey his word. So let's sing this song together. Ready? Here we go. Obedience is the very best way to show that you believe. Doing exactly what the Lord commands. Doing it happily. Action is the key. Do it immediately. Joy you will receive. Obedience is the very best way to show that you believe. Now spell it O B E D I E N C E. Obedience is the very best way to show that you believe. We want to live pure, we want to live clean, we want to do our best. Sweetly submitting to authority, leaving to God the rest. Walking in the light, keep our attitude right on the narrow way. For if you believe the word you receive, you always will obey. Now spell it O B E D I E N C E. Obedience is the very best way to show that you believe. Isn't that true? Obedience is the very best way to show that you believe. And how do you obey? Quickly, right away. Yes, ma'am. Yes, sir. Sweetly, yeah, uh, sweetly. Make sure you're sweet on the outside, sweet on the inside. And completely is all finished. Can you imagine if your parents told you to do something and you did everything else besides the one thing they asked you? Well, that wouldn't be obedience because they didn't ask you to do everything else. They asked you to do that one thing. It's important that we do sweet. Quickly, sweetly, and completely to whatever authority asks us to do. And so that's a key to obedience. But you know what? Today we've got a new verse that applies to our missionary story. And we're not going to spend a lot of time on this because I have today a special guest that's going to come and appear for us. A special guest that relates to the land where Amy Carmichael is a missionary. So here's what we're going to do. I'm going to take my Bible. I'm going to open it up. And our scripture today is found in the book of Psalms. Their songs are so beautiful. In the book of Psalms, the author is David. And David, this is a special verse. And I want you to look up here on the screen as I read it in God's Word. I've got my copy of the Holy Bible. Someone said it was a Holy Bible. <laughs> it's a Holy Bible. It's a special book written by God. And he used human authors to do that. But you know what? It's important that we know the address. Wow. You know, when you go out looking for a house or a business, you've got to have an address. 
And so the address of the verse that we're looking at is found in Psalms 37, verse 25. Now, what is the chapter? Is it Psalms? Is it 25? Or is it 37? Well, the chapter is... That's right! Give you some high five! It's 37. That's the big number. Remember, and then the verse is what? Is it Psalms or 25? Psalms or 25? The verse is... You're right! It's 25! The chapter is the big number. The verse is the small number. All right, so we see Psalm. And what is Psalm? It's the book. It's the book, 66 books in the Bible. And so we've got a lot of choices. And so we got to know, is the Psalms in the New Testament or is the Psalms in the Old Testament? Well, I have, to remember, I have to tell you, there's an index in the front of your Bible, but also after a while, it's amazing. You memorize these things. The more you're in God's Word, you memorize this, and it goes in through your eyes, and it goes up to your brain, and it goes wow, and down your heart. It is incredible how God's Word does that. It not only helps us to know who God is, but it helps us to love and obey Him. And so Psalm 37 is, Psalm is found in the Old Testament. 37 is the chapter, and 25 is the verse. Okay, I'm going to read it out loud. You follow along as I read it out loud. Here we go, Psalm 37, verse 25. I have been young and now am old, yet have I not seen the righteous forsaken, nor his seed begging bread. Psalm 37, 25. You know what? I don't think I said the reference, or excuse me, the address before I said the verse. So let's say that again. And this time, you join me as I say out loud. Ready? Psalm 37, 25. I have been young and now am old, yet have I not seen the righteous forsaken, nor his seed begging bread. Mm. I see a mistake already. Do you see that mistake? Hmm. You know, because we all make mistakes, don't we? Yeah, that should be seek. That should be mm, seed. It's very important that we know that seed is a person, okay? And so as we look at this verse and we see something very important, we begin to understand something. And that is, I have been young. David talked about his youth. And now he is old. So he's talking about two time periods in his life. His younger years and his older years. And what he's saying is that in his youth and in his older years, he's never seen someone having a need that God couldn't fulfill. Oh, man. You know what? God may not fulfill our wants, but he always takes care of our need. He always takes care of our need. You know what? I love this. Someone told me this and it's so true. Taking your hand and, and, and you know, putting it towards you, it says, I will never forsake you. And isn't that comforting? I will never forsake you. Now put your name in there. I will never forsake Mr. Finley. You know what? That's a great truth to remember you, to remember when you're scared or when you feel all alone, that, that God will never leave you nor forsake you. He's going to be there. Oh, don't you get scared at night when the lights are all dark and there's no light? And you, you get that little night light. Man, that, that verse is like a night. It's, excuse me. It's like a light in the night. It reminds you that God is always there and he'll never leave you nor forsake you. He told that to Joshua, then he also repeated it in the New Testament in Hebrews. But you know what? Here's what David's saying. I've been old and I've been young, and God always takes care. Always takes care of his people. Oh, my friend, do you know Jesus as your Savior? Have you received him? Oh, I hope so. I hope so. And so this verse is great. Let's go through it one more time. And we're going to play volume control, okay? This is loud. This is regular. And this is quiet, okay? So this is quiet. 
medium, loud. Okay, so make sure you tell your parents what's going on so you don't, you know, I don't like startled, okay? All right, so here we go. We're going to say the reference, the verse, and then the reference. All right, here we go. I'll direct you. Psalm 37, 25. I have been young and now am old, yet have I not seen the righteous forsaken, nor his seed begging bread. Psalm 37, 25. Wow, you did a good job on that. And here's what I'd like you to do. Keep going over that verse and let it remind you that God is always there. And he's going to take care of your needs. He's going to take care of your needs. Well, you know what? I told you that there was going to be a special visitor. And this visitor reminds us of the story, I Dare, the Amy Carmichael story. And this is a beautiful story about how God used this young lady to really change things in India, yeah, that's part of it, but in the lives of young people. Oh man, isn't that, isn't this great to know that God cares and God uses people like you and me, just ordinary people to do extraordinary things? That's the way God operates. He wants us to be involved in his programs, in his, in his outreach, in the great things that he's doing. All that we have to do is be willing, okay? We have to be willing to do what God wants. And so I brought my friend with me here today. Let me introduce you to him. He is no stranger to the land of India. He's very important. In fact, he, uh, he, you would see him there and uh, he would enjoy being here. So come on out and it's good to have with us in the house. All right, Casey. <laughs> Casey. All right, Casey. What? You're a little nervous? That's okay. That's all great. I know we all get a little frightful, but, but why do we call you KC? Well, that's because I'm a King Cobra. All right, KC. Give me some of that flat. Yeah, all right. Thank you. Well, thank you very much. Well, uh, KC, you know what? I, 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 uh, I know that you live in the land of India. That's right. You live in the land of India, but um, are you... I've heard stories about... Your type being spitting cobras. Uh, are you a spitting cobra? Nope. I'm a king. You're a king cobra. That's right. And as a king cobra, you don't spit, do you? That's a nasty habit, isn't it? Yeah. But, but you know what? You're also not poisonous, are you? That's right. Why is that? Well, because poison is something that you take in. But I am venomous. I bite. Ooh, that's kind of scary. Oh, don't worry about it. I only bite when I need to. I'm going to bite when I'm startled. Yeah, okay. Well, you know what? Casey, it is good to have you here today. Yeah, it's good to be here. And uh, you know what? We're going to talk about India, but we're going to talk about how God made India and how God made the people in India and how much he loves the people in India. Yeah, I know God made me. That's right. He made you. He made all the creatures of the earth to enjoy. Well, KC, it's so good to have you with us here today. Why, why are you shaking like that? Because that's what I do. I go back and forth with that dish. I like to dance. What, you, you like to dance? What is that called? It's called the KC dance. And, and what is that? Is that where you go back and forth like this? Well, I don't have a flute, but do you need any music? No, I don't need any music. I just go back and forth like this. Well, how about if I went... Help. It helps a little bit, but you know what? I I, I, I got to go back, man. I, all this shaking back and forth, it tired me. Well, Casey, thanks for coming. Thanks for being a part of us here today, and we hope you have a good rest of the day. All right. See you later, kids. <laughs> all right. Well, Casey, it was great having you with us here today. And again, we're going to go and talk about the story of Amy Carmichael. And do you know what? The first chapter isn't no and answer. We talked about how God answers prayer. And how although we'd always like to hear yes, sometimes we have to hear no. And is no an answer from God? Yes. Especially as Amy learned about her eye color. Oh, do you remember how Amy wanted blue eyes? And she prayed to God, God, would you give me blue eyes? And she prayed that night and she knew that God could answer that prayer because God is the God of the impossible. He's the God that can do all things. 
But you know what? She woke up after praying. She went to the dresser, looked in the mirror, and she had huh, brown eyes. Now she knows God's able, but God had given an answer, and that answer is no. Now, she remembered that in her heart, and she trusted God that God knows best. And later on, as she went to India to be used by God, it was so important that she had brown eyes so that she could walk amongst the people and not be recognized as a foreigner. Wow. God knows what he's doing, doesn't he? But then also in chapter 2, we found out even little children. There were some that told Amy uh, Carmichael that as a missionary, she should be doing uh, reaching out to the adults. But Amy felt burdened for the children of India, especially as they were being taken and sold into temple worship servants. She remembers seeing the, the fear that was in those little children's eyes as they went into the temple and the temple gates closed. And Amy began to pray and she began to trust God for information about how she could find out where these children are coming from and help them. But then also we learned about things that are eternal. Remember, Amy helped that elderly lady when she was younger and how she was laughed at, ridiculed for helping that, that elderly lady. You know what? We find ourselves today in difficult times and and you know what? What we need to do as Christians, especially even you that are SM all, you're like, well, with your family, I, I, I'm just so small, I can't do anything. You know what? You can do a great thing. Hey, you can phone call, you can email, you can write a letter and say, hey, how are you doing, Grandma and Grandpa? Oh, I miss you. And draw a picture from them. Grandparents love pictures. I know, because my kids. She, she does pictures for us all the time. So does Ruth. And we put them all over the place. Oh, they didn't love those pictures. You know what's a scary thing? Is when we feel all alone. We feel all alone. Well, you know what? Last week we talked about things that are eternal. Not just temporal, but eternal. Let's remember that. Let's make sure our lives count for what is eternal and not what is of the moment in temporal. Well, this week we're going to talk about another part of the story of Amy Carmichael. And you know what? We, we ended last week's story with a, a, a girl who was, well, she ran away from her family because she did not want to worship idols anymore. And she ran to Donovar, which is where Amy Carmichael had her camp. And Amy Carmichael accepted her. And the Jewel of Victory, which was her name, remember that? What an interesting name, Jewel of Victory. But she went to Camp Darvana, and she was a little bit older. You see, not only not, not all the people that were living at Darvana was were young, but some of them were older. And you know what, Amy? She she uh, took care of Jewel of Victory, but also you know what? Interesting enough, the family found out where Jewel of Victory was, and they came. And uh, as they surrounded the house, Jewel came out and she says, I do not want to worship the idols anymore. I want to worship the true and living God, which the Bible proclaims. And after a while, her parents went away and she was able to live at Darvana with Amy. And she was able to also take care of the kids. Well, you know what was happening at this missionary complex, which Amy was running? It began to grow. It began to grow, and it grew to such a great degree that Amy began to wonder, what am I going to do? How am I going to take care of all of these children? There's so many people looking to me to take care of. It makes me think about the Israelites in the, in the desert, in the wilderness, looking to Moses. And Moses must have been like, whoa, i got to take care of all these people. No, Moses, no, Amy, God's going to take care of them. But Amy learned this at a young age. You see, Amy lived in Ireland. And while she was in Ireland, she was asked to be a part of a group that would collect money for an orphanage that was being built. And when Amy joined the team, she said, I know where I'll go. There's this man who had this huge mansion built. And Amy went right up to the door, knocked on the door. Yes. The man came to the door and she said, Hi, I'm Amy Carmichael. I'm collecting for an orphanage to be built in Ireland. Will you help? She was sure. 
sure that the man would know. But you know what? The man didn't know. He didn't give anything. Yet he seemed to have so much. He wouldn't give out of the much that he had. And Amy turned away, and she was quite befuddled. She was quite, mm, she didn't understand. And that's because God was teaching Amy that it's not always the way we think that God will provide. It would have been very easy for that man to give a lot of money, but that's not oftentimes how God operates. God operates in not our ways, but he operates in his own way, in his own time. Well, you know what? People at her complex began to grow. Why? People at her complex went from 30 to 42. I mean, it began to explode. Amy was called Ama, which they, it is in an Indian term for mother. They loved her. And Amy was always having to supply rice, milk, um, wages for the workers there, and also money to travel to find out where the other children are that needed her help. So Amy had a lot on her shoulders, but she remembered that God would be the supplier. And oftentimes, she was reminded how God had already supplied their spiritual need through Jesus Christ. You see, God loved you and me so much that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Yes, God needs to take care of our, our, our needs and food and, and different things, but he's already taking care of our spiritual need. And that is when we die, we can go to heaven. And she began to tell this to the children all the time. Well, you know, as their needs were being met, there were a couple occasions where their needs were great. Greater than anybody at the mission complex could provide. There was a time when they needed about 100 pounds in English money. You know, in American money, that's about $8,000. That's a lot of money back then. But you know what? They would gather around the children in Amy, and they would begin to open up letters from people that would send them. And sometimes the letters would have encouraging words in it, and they always enjoyed reading them. But then other times, as they opened the letters, they would find money in that letter that would be used to take care of their needs. Well, one time they were all gathered together and they began to open up letter after letter and they enjoyed the wonderful words inside, the words of encouragement, but there was no money. And even some of the children began to open up the letters and turn them inside out and kind of shake them, but there was no money until the last letter. The last letter was actually from the mission secretary of England. And as they opened it, they saw, I got a golden ticket. No, they didn't have a golden ticket from Willy Wonka. That doesn't exist. But you know what they did have? They found inside a note saying 60 pounds is on its way. Oh, more. Wow, that's almost halfway. And you know what the children did? They shouted, good. And they clapped. Why don't we do that right now? Say, good. And clap. I can't hear you. Okay. Do it one more time. Good. And they got so excited. And it wasn't just good in the sake of good, but they were almost giving God a, 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 a clap of praise. Thank you, God. You know what? We really become unthankful, don't we? We really become unthankful. We need to be thankful. Thank you for what you've given us, God. And thank God, but thank others. Thank parents. Thank those that love us. Thank those that give us. Sometimes we act like, yeah, I, I deserve it. No. You know what? God has given us so many wonderful things. Let's be thankful. The grace of that was his son, Jesus. Well, you know what? You're saying to yourself as you're sitting there, and I know some of you are doing math. That's great, Mr. Finley. They got 100 pounds, but they're a little over halfway. Well, you're right. But you know what? I want to indicate there weren't any letters there, but there was a box. And the children took that box and they opened it up. And inside that box, there was a, a, a note on top that promised 51 pounds. 
Now you're doing the math, 60, 51. That's right, that's 117 pounds. You know what, Amy and the children were so thankful that God had provided. But you know what, we not only need to trust in the provision of God, but also in his timing. And you know what, as we trust in his timing, we also see that God was using people all over the world to help out. Whether it was a working boy from France who sent his first paycheck, or maybe it was a poor girl in America that sent six pennies. Wow. Or maybe it was an 84-year-old couple in England who sent ten coins. Or, or maybe it was vegetables from another Indian village. Or maybe from Africa sending 50 pounds. Or some ladies in England knitting some baby sweaters for their little babies. There were all kinds of provision coming in. But as we say, we need to not only trust in the provision, trust in the God who's providing, but also trust in God's timing. And there was a need that they began to pray at Darvor. You know, to reach the kids in a timely fashion, they were really praying about a uh -uh, an automobile. An automobile would be so helpful for them to get to a place quickly. And so everyone at the orphanage, especially the leaders, began to pray, God, is it your will to get a car? A car is so expensive, even back in that time period. Well, as they began to pray, Amy got a call one time. There was a child that was a very far distance away. And Amy took a bus. She also took a wagon. She took another bus and then a wagon. She finally got to the child's house and was, be able to, was able to talk to them and minister to them. And then finally she had to take a bus and then another wagon and then a bus. And that final wagon she had to take, they charged her three times the amount of money. It was not a good experience. And so when Amy got back to the compound, and they had been praying for a long time, they recognized that God will supply their needs, but they just want to be in the will of God. They want to do it in God's timing. So after three months, the secretary came to Amy and said, Amy, we've paid off all of our bills, and we've got enough money for a car. And Amy said, well, that's, that's great, but there's so many needs. I don't know if a car is. Let's do this. Let's pray that God would send the exact amount for the car. Wow. Uh, that sounds like a test, doesn't it? Well, God's on that. The God owns a cattle on a thousand hills. He owns all things. And I'm not saying we should test God like Gideon did. Make the fleece dry and the ground wet. Make the fleece wet and the ground dry. I'm not saying we should do that. But you know what? There was a test, and guess what? They needed 160 pounds, which is equivalent to $10,000. And you guessed it, never late, never early, always on time. A check came in the mail for the exact money. Man, God is so good, isn't he? And as they began to think about this complex, and as they, they got their car and were able to travel, you know what? They began to add buildings. They added a hospital. And Amy began to pray also that, yes, they were reaching out and getting all the girls, but what about the boys of India? What about all the boys of India? And so they saw right next to their property a piece of land. But you know what? There was idol worship on. And Amy had asked, can we purchase this land so we can build? And the people were fearful, and they said, no, because we worship idols on this land. But Anne, Amy knew how to handle this. She knew who to go to. Well, I had to go to the president of India. No, too small. Go to the mayor of India. No, too small. Go to the God of heaven. Go to Jehovah Jireh, the God who will provide. And she did. And you know what? What do you think is going to happen next week? Well, come back to find out, because we'll find out. Do they get the property and build that house for all the boys? It's going to be so exciting. You won't want to miss it. Well, you know what? We've come to the conclusion of our time. And so, let's shake. No. Let's throw our hands up, put them together, drop them in our lap, bow our head.
let's bow our heart and let's pray. Father in heaven, thank you for being a great God. And as you have provided for Amy and all the children in Dardmore back then, Lord, you will provide for us. You are a good God. Thank you for providing your son, Jesus, to die on the cross for our sins. Thank you for the very air that we breathe that is, is so common and so abundant, yet it's so necessary. We pray that you'll keep our world safe, keep our country safe, Lord. Father, we pray that you'll take away uh, some of the uh, viruses uh, that are out there, Lord. And Father, we just trust in you. Keep us healthy and keep us strengthened, Lord. Father, we love you and we thank you for this time. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Well, this is Reverend Aaron Billy. It's been great to be with you this morning. Join us next week as we get together for a wonderful time. I dare in Amy Carmichael.